What's really? You play upon the Lush Uno in the building. This is No Jumper, and I got with me a seminal L.A. rap legend. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it from, um, I don't want to say new school, but like in between the old school and the current generation. Like MySpace days. The MySpace <laughs> well, that's era. When it, that's when it first sprouted, yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Self-provoked. Word, word. The 818's own. What's good with you, man? Man, I'm chilling right here getting used to the interview life because it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You've always been someone that kind of lets the art speak for itself, I, I find. Yeah, unless I'm drunk and on a live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, going back to the mid 2000s you were like in high school right and uh yeah i was about i'll say 16 years old when i dropped my first 15 or 16 when i dropped my first uh, song on myspace <laughs> and are, were you already involved in graffiti at that time yeah or? yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. so describe what's what's the origins in the in the graph world like oh uh, well i grew up just looking up to like a lot of writers like from msk kog like i was in the valley so versus was my favorite writer back mm. in the day and then from there, uh, yeah, so I started doing it myself, started meeting people in uh, high school or mi even from middle school, because I think even middle school, I started writing a little bit. Man. And then, um, yeah, just uh, got a few people together, started a little a crew, you know, that till this day is still mm -hmm. up, uh, active and stuff. So, yeah, man, it started from there. And then having eyes on me through the graffiti world kind of like was a bridge with the music world. So it kind of helped out during those days. And also when I first came out, it was very rare for an independent artist to have a... <clears throat> Uh, YouTube uh, music video mm -hmm. and I remember my homie was filming it with like a little black and white camera and, mm -hmm. and then we dropped and it was like a big deal back in the day it's like oh these how they drop a music video like because only industry artists were dropping or not as many and like I said independent artists were dropping like that and is this like prior to on a high note or is that before on a high note yeah so you were just dropping tracks what, what was your first like when you, you're still in high school and you're kind of known for for bombing at this point mm -hmm. And uh, your crew's getting some love, getting up and all that. Yeah. When you were like, you know, when I grew up, there's a thin line between graffiti and gang banging. And even if you get into it mm -hmm. for catching spots and all that, you know, there's like a a turf element that comes into play. Did, did Were you affected by that at all? 100%. Some people even call this tag bangers for right. a little while, you know, because there's beef, certain people, certain happens, knives get pulled, guns get pulled, like in certain not say anything happening but things happen and there's certain consequences and yeah and we even got like kind of we we started popping up in radars of people who were strictly gangbanging you know right and like and that's that's something that really happened like back in the day for for me and like my homies it always started as graffiti and just trying to catch spots and yeah we might have been you know doing our little hustling selling or selling whatever we was doing and boosting and all that but it was about just getting known, getting fame, catching spots. But then if you're tagging in certain neighborhoods that are gang turf, then it becomes a whole other issue. And then you kind of got to band together and yeah, the stakes get higher. Yeah. And then back in the day, <clears throat> that type of was, glo oh, was still is glorified, right? So right. we feel like, oh, we felt tough. We had like little ego to us. We caused problems to insurance saints. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was an interesting time. <laughs> and when did, when like during that trajectory, did you realize? I want to express myself on the mic and start and start rapping. Well, at that age, I was purely ego driven. So when I started realizing realizing I was getting more attention making music than uh, graffiti, I just started focusing on that more. And I I, I, I kind of integrated the both too. But what even compelled you to start? When did you realize that you could rap and all that? Uh, I would freestyle. Uh, I would skateboard and I would freestyle cipher. And then one homie, uh, shout out Eighth Kind, Freddie G, he pulled up. And he's like, oh, I record, and I blow my music on MySpace. And I'm like, let me hear this. And I heard it, and my mind was blown, because I was like, oh, you record yourself, and mm. whatever. So he invited me to his pad, and that's really when it all started. Now, the valley, you're from, like, what part of the valley are you from? Sun Valley. Sun Valley. 91352. That's um, a crazy part of the valley that people don't really know much about. Like, mm. there wasn't really too many examples of rappers that were popping before you out there, like, out there, was there? You know what? I gotta give homie his flowers, uh, MC Germ. There okay. was a, there was an artist that um was popping before I was like popping, like, and I kind of admired homie at the time too. Mm. Um, 
he had a song called What If I Blow Up that I feel like a lot of people my age group would be like, oh, shh. If they remember that song here, they'll be like, yo. I think was... I remember that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And yep. you know what? That's how I met Severe. I hella admired Severe at that time frame, too, because he was making music with Jeremy. And I thought they were both dope. They're, they're, they were both dope. No, I still are. Um, but yeah, so like that's how I actually met Severe, who is a baby Franco now. Right. I, yep. I know you interviewed him. Of, of course. Yeah. One of my close homies. Hell yeah. yeah. Great artist. Um, I, would, I definitely want to get into all that in the form. But, but I, I'm... Always curious, like, so Sun Valley, that's where, like, Circus Liquor is at, right? Th that's North Hollywood. But that's, like, near the kind of the border. Probably Loki. like a five-minute five minute drive up okay. Vineland. Yeah. Okay. How would, well, how would you describe Sun Valley as opposed to other parts of the valley? Uh, where, When I moved there, I remember there was a lot of gang activity, a lot of beef, like, uh, a lot of graffiti, a lot of, uh, uh, it was a little more... Maybe, you know how we have childhood memories and things were crazier at the time? Yeah. I don't know if that's the what's going on right here, but I felt like it was a little more active back then. Mm -hmm. um, it's still active, don't get me wrong, but it's just kind of like, it's like North Hollywood. It's like uh, um, not as active, uh, active as L.A., but it's still got its thing going on. Got a co its own culture, and in a sense, you know, it's very uh, also competitive with L.A., like the Valley right. is like Valley L.A. thing. You know? Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people from LA have a certain per perception of the valley and like white girls or like some nice shit. Yeah. 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 They think that the 818 is like, they think of like pornos, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they, they think of, they think it's like more privileged, but really the valley, especially like when I grew up in LA, the valley was crazy. And I wound up, there's two things that really brought me to the valley. Cause growing up in LA and the, like, I'm from West LA. You don't really go to the Valley when you're like in high school and stuff like that. There's no real reason to go over the hill like that but there's two things that brought me over one was i wound up getting expelled and banned from all la usd schools so the high school i graduated from was in like the sherman oaks van nuys border so i wound up going to and when i was out there i met a bunch of kids and started was functioning it, was it private it was called bridges academy oh, and it was okay. um it's basically like it's a charter school and it was basically like if you're um if your parents care about you enough, they'll try to get you to go there so you can get a high school diploma. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's it was for at the time there's an element of like special kids being there, like you know, kids on the spectrum and things like that or kids on medication. And then now that school's pretty much all that. And the the crazy thing is where the school is at, it was on um Burbank and Sepulveda. It used to be a dentist office and now it's a dispensary. <laughs> And the crazy thing was, I was like, damn, like, I think it became a dispensary in, like, 2015 or something. And I was like, y'all late to this because I was selling weed there 15 years ago. Like, <laughs> but yeah, you feel me? Like, I, I know exactly what area you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You've probably seen that dispensary and all that. So. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. So me being out there. That was like, I, you know, I met kids from all over, from Canoga Park, from Van Nuys, from Pacoima and all that. So I kind of like became, you know, I was messing with a girl from Taft. So it's like, I'm all over the place in the, so I'm like, hey, hello homies from NoHo and all that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so then it's like, I really, the Valley was active. It was damn near like more active than a lot of parts of LA at that time. It was yeah, pretty, certain areas for sure. Certain for areas. Sure. Like, Van Nuys was always active. Uh, um I heard Canoga Park is actually Canoga too. Park I, I don't was know crazy. Yeah. Panorama City, Panorama City Pacoima, yep. Yep. All, um, Tahunga, like yep. all that. Yep. There's like, yeah, like NoHo, like every block's a different crew or gang. It was like, it was insane. But the other thing that brought me over there was the basement and like the basement. Oh, shit. Yeah. Seminal part of LA hip hop history. Yeah. Shout out Nat. She was, Shout out Nat. Well, I think she was the latest owner. Yeah, of it, I think right? the dude was named Aaron before her. It was okay. the guy's name. There's like a couple owners before. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But, no, that's what's up. There's a lot of history. History and that shit, yeah. yeah, like, and I mean, not only were there rap battles there and hip hop shows, but they were you could buy streakers and cans and all that. You and feel I, me, Montana's? That was, that was and, a spot. I used to freestyle battle there. I would have, uh, I shouldn't even have said that because they're so cringe. <laughs> and there's, all right, anyways, uh, so yeah, I used to do a lot of things out there. No, I'm yeah, 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 I, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. care. I was yeah, young yeah. as fuck, but fucking, um. No, we used to freestyle. I remember the battle. The, yeah, I remember the battles. Disaster actually judged one once, and I remember I, I the Malathion like, joint. Yeah, yeah, but there was another clip I remember when I was little. I held to heart because I remember like he judged it, and he was like he like was giving me props because I did good on that on that round. Rarely, I rarely did good at the time, <laughs> but um, yeah. And I remember he was like, "Yo, I like you, kid." And I remember I was like, oh, <laughs> <"Disaster's> <laughs> <saying."> <laughs> "What did you feel like?" 
I always ask people from the Valley this, like interviewing Hobson, interviewing uh, Franco and all these different people. I always ask, what do you feel is like the biggest difference between the, the Valle and L.A.? Damn, man. You know what? I can't really, now that I kind of do, uh, dwelled in both areas, I can't say there's too much of a difference, mm -hmm. bro. Like, if anything, they all get along. I have my crew. We got LA cats. We got some uh, IE cats, uh, Valley cats. And when we get in one place, we're all like tagger, graphers, hip hop heads. So we all kind of like just mix in. Yeah. So I might just kind of be, uh, based on that perspective, not too much of a difference, but there is a for sure a, a barrier with the ego. Like I'm saying that like, right. I'm from LA and you're not from LA. You're from the Valley. Like these, Right. But besides that, no, man, I feel like there's not too much of a difference. Yeah, no, 1,000%. Like me, I live in Van Nuys right now. And to me, Van Nuys reminds me of like West LA in the 90s, like before it got super gentrified and most of like the like Chicano Latino families were pushed out and stuff. It still has that culture way more prevalent and things like that. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, my next door neighbors have a bunch of roosters and all that. Oh, so, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. it's No, for sure. There's those areas in the valley for sure. Like yeah. some valley, if you go by like... Uh, uh, the Garmo and like certain areas by uh, but yeah, it, it got its areas. The roosters, they you got feel the, me? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I'm like right off a of major street. I'm like two blocks off a of major street, and still it's like, but it, it, it's dope. I like that a lot. So like growing up, obviously you was involved in like the crew tag banging type life. Did you get in a lot of trouble, or were you? You seem like a smart. I know you're an incredibly smart dude. Like, mm -hmm. were you getting in trouble a lot, or what was that like? Yeah, I've got my pad rated um, by Burbank PD. Um, I got my pad rated by PD, um, a, a police department, um, when I was 17. I got a lot of fights, of course, comes with it. Um, yeah, bro, I was kind of, I was doing billboards. I was fucking like, I remember getting stuck on billboards because fucking cops pulled over to get tacos out of taco stands and I'm laying on a billboard like for 30 <laughs> minutes to, waiting for us to finish eating. The, like, so I definitely have my stories. Like, I got a vault of them for sure. <laughs> Did you, um, so I mean... Are you able to talk about the the police rating thing or? Yeah, I just kind of rephrased that. I didn't want to uh, emphasize on Burbank PD, yeah. but uh, yeah, I said it. Already, I mean, it's so. already it's like yeah. way past what happened. Like I'm, I think that's it. Sounds like an interesting story. Yeah, uh, they raided my pad. I was at a at a party, and then uh, we got into it. Me and two homies got into it with like five, six people. Whatever, my homie gets cracked in the head with a skateboard. Um, I thought this fool was like fucking dead because he was like fucking bleeding, or whatever. So I just like stay with him. The cops pull uh, pull up, they arrest us. They put me in the back of the whip. They take my phone with me. They never gave me my phone back after that whole altercation. They just mm. took me or whatever. They didn't uh, give me my phone back. So I guess while they had it, they were looking through my shit. And it was mm. I had like the Verizon T phone or whatever. That right. I it. Yeah. So they saw my pictures and shit, and they're like, yo. Yeah, they just raided my pad and like, so yeah, like they, on vandalism, basically. Like, yeah. yeah, they were trying to charge me for LA property, uh, Burbank city property, and uh, LA property. So like, they're trying to fuck me, you know? Like, right. Yeah, and, and then, Burbank don't play. That's why I didn't even want to say that. To yeah, fuck yeah, it, yeah, bro. Because they're like, and they remember, like, it's weird, like they. Yeah, I, I shout out Burbank. I love Burbank. Burbank PD. Shout out to y'all. Y'all cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I learned my lesson and shit. You know. So. Yeah. Well, not really. Actually, I, bro, my. I fuck it up. Oh. Come on, right, you so are no jumper. After that shit happened, they got my my pad got rated and shit. Right, my fucking I was living with my parents. I was like, yeah, sixteen or seventeen, seventeen I think. The next day, I sneak out my pad. My parents are like, "Yo, fuck that! We're in a fucking." They had ADT systems to try to keep me in the house, not from burg keep burglars out, whatever. So right. I end up fucking uh, sneaking out because I would disable it or fucking whatever. I would sneak out and then I ended up getting stranded because three of the homies I went painting with got caught. And I was mm. just, like, I got away and I hopped into a backyard, whatever. And this is before all the homies. I was in high school. This is before all the homies had cars and shit, you know. Mm -hmm. So who would I call? Like, I was like, yo, I'm stranded. No one's picking up. I call my mom's at like fucking 3.30 in the morning. Like, hey, I'm stranded right here on Zelza by the fucking uh, uh, 118, I think. Right? Yeah. 118 freeway. And then... um. Well, my parents were like fed up. They like didn't know what to do no more because they're like, yo, the pad got raided yesterday, dick, and you're right here fucking. The hard. next day? The literal next day. Like, I'm not even like, not two days, not three days, like the next day. You know? So they're like, yo, like, what's You're wrong? supposed to be in the house. Why aren't you in your room? Like, yeah. yeah. I was bad. And like, to the point where my parents started asking, like, like, sc like school systems for help. You know? They're like, mm. yo, like, they thought they couldn't do it by themselves no more. And she said, so I was hella fucking like, dude, I went to court. I remember my mom crying because they were trying to like, uh, give me options, like, uh, 
probation house, whatever. And then pretty much I was in the court pretty much saying like, yo, like I'm down to go to juvie, like to get it over with quick. Right. But my intention, my mom knew what I was, I was trying to go recruit in there or meet people <laughs> in there. Like I was just <laughs> stupid, ambitious. So you were like, so you were really trying to push the line. Oh yeah, bro. Like I told you, like when, when I was super, uh, I have a, how do I say, obsessive personality. When I really am onto something or like something, research something, whatever, I'm just fully there. You feel me? So that's how I was in that stage of my life. This fool was trying to go to juvie to recruit, not for a gang. For a but fucking writing crew, right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I think about it sometimes and I laugh. Though. Like the homies, like I've been kicking it with the homies more lately and shit. Um, and they always bring up memories. Like like today, actually, I had a uh, shout out my boy Gover. He reminded me when me and like me and him chased some chase some guy out of a yard once. And it's funny because we kind of got into like a little situation. Let's say like a couple days ago. Everything squash is cool now, but. It was funny because it was those same guys from back in the day. Wow. But, but his, his little brother that's in, I don't know, it was like weird. It just comes around though. Full it, circle. Yeah, but it was hilarious. Um, so, yeah. How would you describe your graph style? Uh, now compared to my homies, whack. <laughs> <laughs> my homies are so dope, bro. And I'm just like, yo, y'all, ew, like, I was more of a bomber, like, right. I throw ups. I, I have my style too, don't get me wrong. And I think it's dope, but compared to all the other homies and what they're doing, bro, like, nah, they smoke me. I mean, you're talking about billboards, so you're just trying to, like, get fame. You're going yeah. for visibility, like... I, I was destructive, you feel me? Like, yeah. My energy was definitely more on a destructive uh, outlet. Or, uh, I mean, that's how I, when I used to, when I used to get up, that's what it was. It was, like, hand style and all cool, but I'm just trying to, I want you to see it. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I had enough can't control to just get my name up, you feel me, whatever. Yeah, Like, yeah. that's that's it. But. And that was the fun part to me. Don't get me wrong, the painting at a yard is cool and shit, but to me, like, I love the fucking, when buses were, like, passing by, like, mm -hmm. riding them on the bus, and the bus fucking goes away. Bus drivers try to chase you. Fucking. Right. I used to love getting chased. I used to jack 40s. I used to fucking, I used to steal candy boxes of like hella candy and like go sell it in the same parking lot of Ralph's and shit. And like, <laughs> I'm like hi, this is for Polytech. I'm in the baseball team. We're trying to save up money for you. <laughs> so I would like have my little story and shit, make my money and buy my weed and shit. Like, so I was, I was always getting. Chased. Go get her from day one. <laughs> And, yeah. and your parents were together growing up? Yeah, and... yeah. I have very good parents. They set very good examples for me that, you know, um, but I always got uh, my attention went elsewhere. <laughs> Look at you. Now, um, okay, so you drop your first song on MySpace. Yeah. Now, I don't. I know this wasn't your first song, but there's something I want to ask about. Uh -oh. One of your oldest records. Yeah. And I think it's like on your YouTube channel. It's like the first video that's on there. You have a song with Busy Bone. Oh yeah! Shout out Busy Bone, my favorite did, rapper ever. So how did that come about? Uh, I was doing a show at the Terrence in Pasadena. Okay. And then uh, I have a song where I shout out Bone Thugs and Harmony, and then some two drunk girls, ladies. They're like, oh, you know, I know, like, Busy Bone, that's my boo, whatever. And I'm just like, oh, word. He's like, you want to do a song with him? I'll do, like, what I'm like, I'm down, fuck yeah, you know? She got my number, whatever. She's like, this, all right, I think like a week passed by. I'm selling a sack, fucking some weed to somebody in the car. I remember this scenario perfectly. I get a call, and then I'm like, hello? I'm like, hello, yo, like, his voice, right? Super unique. And, like, he's like, yo, it's Busy Bone. I was like, what the fuck, Busy Bone? I was like, yo, you want to do, like, the collab, the song, right? I'm like, fuck yeah. He's like, all right. You're like, like, is this a prank call? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I was tripping. And he's like, yo, all right, this is how much I charge. And I was like, oh, bro, I'm in high school, bro. I'm selling fucking dime sacks and fucking yeah. dubs, you know? Um, I'm like, oh, bro, like, I fucking respect you, but I don't want to, I don't have money like that. Like, I don't have money. You know, he's like, he asked me how much I had. And I was like, this is how much I had, which I felt like it was a ridiculous amount. You're like, I have $150. Like, Less. Like, like I said, it's my favorite rapper, so I'm not gonna yeah, go too yeah. crazy into the details. But he tried; yeah. he he let me have it at a very, very low price. Right. Um. And then yeah, I took the homie Slime, uh, the homie Slime. Um, we went to a studio in Reseda, and we went to it's like some rich guy's house. Like mm -hmm. he had a big ass crib, and he had a studio in the back, and we just laid it down. A busy spot, basically, like where he was recording. Yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah, I came, and then uh. Yeah, I just dropped it for that, and I I was fucking mind blown that he let it go. Well, I think the whole idea was I wasn't gonna get the rest of it, so I paid a certain amount thing, mm -hmm. and I said I didn't, wasn't gonna get it. Nothing was gonna happen. The guy just gave me the track when I engineered it. Right. Fucking um, the girl reached out after me asking me what happened with all that shit, and I was like, yo, like I didn't even get the. There's more to the story actually. Now that I'm remembering, so because I didn't even get the full files, you so, just got like the bounce down. Yeah, but I still paid, and I remember. 
I got permission from the lady because I was like, yo, I don't have the rest of the money. And I don't know if she felt bad. Like, whatever. She's like, just do whatever you want with it, kind of. You know, on some yeah. dismissive shit. Right. And I was like, fuck, I'm fucking 17 with a fucking busy verse. So I'm going to put that shit. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't making money off So that it. is one of your first songs, basically. No, 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 no. So my fair, no, no, no. My, f I think that was 2000. That was probably like when I was recording maybe one year and a half in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. well, before I was. Man, I can't believe I forgot this shit. Or I didn't bring it up. Before Self-Provoked, I was in a... Well, I was Self-Provoked, actually. But I got into a group called Lost Angels. Okay. And then we started yeah. doing uh, group stuff for a little while. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then after that... Damn, bro, my time... My memory with the time... It's all off. good. It's, <laughs> we done did a lot. Yeah, but... It's one of my... Uh, I'll say it's probably my 10th song, that Busy Bone Club. That's still pretty early. And you, yeah. you, you probably got 500 songs now. Like I, I wish that, uh, that same scenario happened later in my career. Right. Because one, I would have done a better verse because fuck, I hate that verse. One. Two, I would have been more uh, savvy with it. Like, no, I need a fully mix. I don't care how much it like. I'll be more business driven, more intentional, you know? So, yeah. Now, something that I... It's interesting to hear you say that Busy Bone is your favorite rapper because he has a really unique high pitch like i don't want you nailed it yeah certain delivery and certain vocal tone that nobody else has and you have a very distinct mm -hmm. high pitch vocal tone that where how did you develop that style i mean because like I, you, you don't have like a baritone voice but you don't like talk like you rap you know what i mean like mm -hmm. you're able to flip your voice in a way that's really unique and use it as an instrument like how did you form that style uh the homie who helped me with my voice a lot was the homie Xer. Shout yeah. to Xer. Because I remember uh, I was in a studio when I first started recording with them with the Lost Angels group. And then he's like, yo, yell, but don't yell. And I'm mm. like, I'm like, the fuck? So I kept trying. I couldn't do it. You know, like it took me a while to get it, but then I got it. And then I was like, to the point where I ran with it too much at a point where I was doing it too. I'm like, yo, I need to maybe curb my voice down a little, make it like, whatever. Um, add a little more bass to it sometimes. It was dope though. Da, 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 da. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like you were. But <laughs> you know, for sure I gotta give it up to Xer because Xer kinda uh, helped me out with finding that voice. Yeah. Now so okay, so you're you're putting out like after you dropped the first MySpace joint, was it instantly like, oh, this dude's dope? And were kids like from your high school and around your area, like was it kind of spreading instantly or? Y y yes, because I was rapping a lot about my crew. Mm -hmm. And then my crew was like, yo, they rap this. This was rapping about the crew on front. You know, so it was like a little pride thing about right, it. Right, right. sharing it. Fucking. Um, nice yeah. marketing scheme. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. But no, so like, yeah. Um, it, yeah. So out the gate, <laughs> you're getting love. Yeah, for sure. And that encouraged you to keep, keep pushing. And then. Um, at what point were you like, I need to make an actual album? Because this is still like, people are still buying CDs at this point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what, what made you, like, when was it you're like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a complete project? Apples, Pens, and Lighters mm -hmm. was my first one. And um, that was uh, heavily uh, influenced, or project-wise, I think it was Infamizi, his, his name was at mm -hmm. the time. He was the one that was the mind behind the project, the cover, the pictures, the video. So he, he was, worked with Franco a lot too. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, for sure. So he was the one that kind of like saw me view it in that way. Release, oh, let's drop a project. Oh, we have this many songs. Let's release it as that. So like, I would give him credit for helping me uh, drop the, my first project, Apple's Man. Oh, and he produced all, all obviously credit for direction, but also credit for producing. He produced that. He did like, did we do videos? I think we did like two videos for that project. Um, so yeah, shout out Infamizi, shout out, hey, he goes by 92 now. Okay. Yeah, David Carcamo, fucking, I don't know who he's going by now, but I just want to say his real name. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So, at what point during this whole, like, path did, you know, you have a legendary crew in L.A. hip-hop that was, like, huge in the Valley for a long time and just on a high note, and, like, you're basically, like, the one of the forefathers, if not the creator of that crew, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And when when did that all start? Was that around that same time? I think that was around 2012-ish or something. So that's a little bit later? Yeah, yeah, that was a little later. So you're already kind of like buzzing by yourself? Yes. Uh, well, all of our homies kind of had something going on, like Sev, Xer, at last, at the time, it was Oh No and Xer. And right. Like, like, why No? Why No, fucking Linoski, M4, he goes by Nosa now. Um, uh, and we've had, like, yeah, everybody had their thing going on and shit. So we kind of just, I, I had an idea of bringing them together because 
there was like a little conflict at the time that was going on, and fools were like kind of morphing into their own, their own little corners and shit. On some rap shit or on some rap shit on and some, like rap some shit. weird fucking ego shit, you know. Including, I'm not being saying I was heavily part of that shit too, but um, but uh, yeah. So I guess I just was like, yo, I approached Severe with it, the idea of creating or uh, Baby Franco. Now I approached him. Severe, with idea. Bobby Butcher, yeah. Baby Franco, <laughs> all those names. <laughs> so I approached him about starting a crew, and then I had the idea of a high note or something like high note, right? I remember we were chilling at some, uh, at some, um, some shop that he had a homegrown work guy. It's right there on fucking Laurel Canyon and Burbank or Magnolia, whatever. And then there was a billboard and it had like, uh, it was like coins, whatever, but it said on a something. Right. And then he's like on a, what, on a high note or something like that. Mm. And I'm like, like on a high note. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, whatever. And we've heard that shit be said before, you know? Of I'm course. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. We ran with that shit. Shout out my boy, uh. Solid. He went by Solid Visions back then. His name's Will. He created like the little logo for me and shit. Mm-hmm. And then from there, yeah, we just ran with it. Got everybody else in. And fucking, I hit up Exer. Told him my idea with the crew, what we should do, because it was like a whole underground boom bap movement. We were doing shows. Right. I was throwing shows. I was doing like, I was paying people like fucking a hundred fifty dollars to use their backyard for a show. Mm-hmm. Fucking have the homies rock. Fucking collect, get a keg charge, up in there. Charge, type, huh? Like I get a keg up oh, in hell there. Yeah, like, yeah. Hell yeah. Fucking, we were all under 21 and shit. Yeah. So I can, yeah, it's a good time, man. So, like, one of the things that I feel like is very innovative and really helped on a high note stand out from other crews and movements at the time was y'all were really early on and just really advanced with your merch. Mm -hmm. And you had hella merch and, like, for every project and every artist on the, on the part of the crew had their own shirts and all that. Like, yeah. how, what what made you like? Was that just the same hustler mentality that had you selling candy straws outside of Ralph's or like? Yeah, I was like, I was before I was really making them like money off streaming. You feel me? Like, so like I was like, yo, I need to make money. So to me, it was like the shows and then the merch. I was doing self provoked merch before on a high note merch, so I knew that shit made money. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. At that time, I was definitely thinking about yo, I need to make some bread because I got attention but i'm still broke <laughs> you mm-hmm. feel me? i'm young as fuck i'm just rapping fucking i remember the first time i got paid was at second street jazz club you remember that legendary spot, spot. Yeah. come on downtown la i got paid like a hundred dollars and i was so proud that night bro I, yeah you know what that might have been the first time i met wino too like, okay yeah so yeah I, so well, you guys were all kind of rapping together before well a... i heard about the wino on youtube yeah and then i reached out to him sent him a message he had a song called love for the birds mm-hmm. that was fucking big that's just dope ass song but I reached out to him. I was like, yo, I fucking fuck with you, bro. Let's meet up. We met up. Told him they're like, join this crew and shit. He he didn't know anybody. So I probably kind of, yeah. And then, yeah, bro, like little by little, it was just people we kind of knew throughout time. And that's how that crew morphed. And that's around the first time I, I think the first time I became aware of you, maybe like 2010, 11, around that time, like... And I get, I want to say it was on a high note era, maybe so, but I remember there is a clip of you, Severe, and Reverie rapping together, like freestyling. Mm-hmm. And I was like, who are these kids? You mm-hmm. feel me? Like, and then I kind of looked into it more. I was like, damn, they got like this whole, you guys kind of created your own scene. Yeah, like, for sure. And like the, the boom bap was a big thing always like, so did you, did you grow up around were fools listening to more like mainstream and gangster rap or was like boom bap just everywhere around you? What made you gravitate towards that? I grew up on Bone Thugs, 50 Cent, I mean, and like the basic mainstream shit back in right. the day, you know? And then uh, in high school, I met some girl, I think in like 10th grade maybe. Um, and she put me on Atmosphere, put me on fucking Evidence, put me, well, put me on Rhyme Sayers. Mm-hmm. And then from Rhyme Sayers, I kind of like spread out. And then I met Wino. Wino put me on Project Blowed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, who are these motherfuckers rapping right. completely more, like, different, aggressive, like, their style, they were chopping, you know? And there, there was this whole, like, theory about Bone Thugs coming to L.A., which there is a lot of, like, you know, oh. good good life cafe. Oh, you know? yeah. So they were, like, they would tell me shit about, like, freestyle fellowship, be, like, a lot of this style, you know? And I'm just like, all right. Um, yeah, bro, I went all over the place, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and then i'm a big r&b baby too bro i put r&b okay. kind of first before hip-hop as far as what i listen to i wish mm-hmm. i could sing if i could sing i wouldn't be rapping <laughs> what do you feel like made you stick out because there's a lot of like boom bap the underground scene in la is so saturated but mm-hmm. you kind of like always stuck out what made people gravitate towards you and i know that's like a 
I know you don't want to be egotistical, but you know. I could be real though. Um, I think it was my high pitched voice. It was different. I had long hair with baggy clothes back in the day. It wasn't too like that much of a thing, you know. There was P right. Rod, obviously, like yeah. bar, but back in the day, like I used to wear big baggy clothes, long hair. You had the Jenkos, uh, uh, huh? The Jenko jeans. No, just like other baggy ass jeans. Oh, the ones that had a crown. Yeah, the yeah, cr- yeah, yeah. The logo was like yeah, a crown. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, bro, so I don't know if it was a little bit of that, um, the graffiti thing helped, uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, bro, maybe, and also, like, I could say I have, like, a certain, uh, back in the day, I was more wild, you feel me, more mm-hmm. entertaining to see as, like, oh, like, this was stealing an apple and fucking recording it for a music video, this was stealing a 40, like, uh, he's tagging in his video, like, It's almost like viral clickbait content before that was a concept yeah. but you're applying it to music videos like yeah yeah and i had a video when i'm walking out of ralph's with shit in my fucking pants and dee, 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 starts beeping and shit, yeah. you know and back in the day it was a big deal it's before like now we got like fucking weird people doing weird shit all the right. time you know like right so back then it was kind of like oh you saw a fucking or what they didn't even know what the fuck i saw i think it was just an apple and that shit right because right. of the sticker but yeah is um also like do you feel like girls liking you a lot because you have like a for an underground rapper i don't even know if you still classify yourself as that but um you have like a pretty big female fan base like self-provoked like when self-provoked goes live on instagram you see a lot of girls popping up hard eye emojis and all that you feel do you feel like that was a part of your success as well because a lot of these rappers be kind of dusty ass ugly motherfuckers (laughs) uh honestly maybe at that time i was you know, I don't know, at that time, maybe, like, oh, fucking cute little wild kid with long hair running around. Like, yeah, maybe, yeah, for sure. I know you hate that about yourself, <laughs> too. Like, And then I made songs also that girls like, like some, like, hopeless romantic shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So they would, like, listen to that. So I'm sure that helped their, like, ide- idealize my um, my image you know, right. in their head. <laughs> um, but, yeah, fucking maybe that helped a little bit. You know, like, what was crazy at the time, and a lot of people would always talk about, like, in the underground world, I know it's weird to bring up, but I just gotta do it, like, she's the homegirl, too, like, you and Rev, like, used to be, like, a couple and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. You and Reverie and stuff. For a long time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, shouts to Rev, you know, I love Rev, she's an amazing artist, amazing person. Yeah. yeah. And, like, what was, was that kind of weird, you guys are both kind of blowing up around the same time, and you're, like, a couple? At the time, uh, I would, I would lie to myself and say no. Now that I look at it, uh, yeah, just because uh, we both are going towards the same goals. It's a weird world, two entertainers, two things. Now I'm thinking about and it. And y'all are both super driven people. like. Yeah, yeah. I found her when I was, uh, I got with her when I was 18, so when I was mm-hmm. young. You feel me? So I was still, she helped. If anything, I give a lot of uh, props to her for helping me see things in them. Because she was mature as hell, like even for her age when I met her. So, like, she was putting me on shit at that time, too. Like, yeah, I always show love. Like, uh, my first, my only Europe tours are with her, two of them. Wow. And she took me on her tour. So, you know, so, like, the love yeah, for that girl is fucking, yeah. And y'all, just no matter what happened, y'all still stayed cool throughout the, you know what I'm saying? We had her a little, you know, like, she uh, was, wasn't fucking me for a minute, you know, yeah, understandably. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, no, nah, yeah, we squashed it. We chopped it up. Everything's cool. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. And around what time... Was it before or after on a high note when you and um because you have like a lot of videos that are in the millions of views, mm-hmm. like one of them and one of the first ones that I really peeped was you and Severe stay true and mm. to to this day I feel like that song is ill because it's like if anyone hasn't heard that that's a dope record because you really are talking about no matter what happens no matter how much success you get. Like you gotta keep it real to your origins, essentially, and be real to yourself. Yeah, stay grounded. Yeah, for stay sure. grounded and stuff. Like, was that around that same time or like? When did we drop that song? I know he re-uploaded it. It reached a million. Or yeah, something, yeah. And then he re-uploaded, it reached a million again. Yeah, people yeah. like that song. I think um, it's over too now. Oh shit! No, yeah. Hell yeah. Um. Damn, bro. Honestly, I'm. F- that was after on a high note started, right? Yeah, yeah, that was when yeah. it first started. Actually, okay. yeah, that's when it first started. Because okay. the guy who filmed that video was the guy that created the On a High Note logo. Shout okay. out Will, Solid Visions. I don't know what he's going by right now, but Will Dara Torte. So it's it's crazy because um, you started like, there's a lot of a lot of people from that scene and on 
and particularly from, you know, like on a high note directly, that y'all all, all kind of blew up in different ways. I mean, Ono is huge right now. You feel me? First Mexican artist on Def Jam, like going crazy. I, I actually hosted a show for him rec or that he headlined recently on Halloween, and it was dope to see him. I'm like, bro, you're like a whole ass superstar now. You feel me? I hadn't seen him for a long ass time. Yeah. And like, you know, all the, like the Wino had a bunch of big records. You feel me? Uh, Severe did his thing. Everybody, Xer, like the whole crew, Lenoski, and you, like you really like popped off too. Is that kind of crazy to see? Like, did y'all, did y'all at a certain point, was it like, we just going to go in our own directions? Or... <laughs> so me and all the homies we're like fucking we love each other we're in we but we're fucking hard-headed bro and we know we all want to do it our way we all know we want to do it in our time you know so it was always very hard to kind of get the whole crew and to do like we i think we have like a total of like six tracks together but that's um, it <laughs> yeah because you so mean hard. as like a whole as collective a whole crew, yeah. yeah but um yeah, it's always been known, like, hey, we got our own thing going on. We're going to put our focus there, but we're a family. And whenever, every here and there, like, we re we linked up, like, three months ago to lay down a record, you know? And it'll be, like, there's a lot of records where it's, like, you know, there's that one with the um, Wino and Xer that was super cracking. Like, oh, Revival. Yep, 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 yep. There's, like, like I said, there's Stay True, You and Sev. Mm -hmm. So, and there's, like, a bunch of, like, little collabs between the group and, like. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, and I feel like the crew even had like little webs within the crew that, you know, mm -hmm. people who would, yeah, hell yeah. And um, at a certain point, I want to say maybe like 2016, you started to evolve past the boom bap stage mm -hmm. of your music. Flavors. Yeah, you feel me? Like yeah. right around that time and you're just experimenting with different styles you still are like you never stopped being lyrical you never i feel like we're trying to like sell out or anything like that but it was just like you're playing with different sounds and things like did you feel like when you did that you got any backlash from like the hardcore hip-hop fans yeah i actually made a skit too about it i just took it off my youtube actually but yeah 100 percent. everybody was like oh you're selling now oh you're trying to sound like everybody else or at that time, I think it was like that SoundCloud scene that was mm -hmm. kind of popping. And mm -hmm. I was fucking with a lot of that shit because it reminded me of a lot of shit I liked too, like 3 Six Mafia and mm -hmm. shit like that. But I definitely did get a little backlash. But it did good. That time in that project, did right. good. a lot of people still to this day, are like, yo, you need to drop something like flavors and shit. And I'm like, maybe one day once I get that energy. <laughs> Do you feel like just like the template of underground hip hop becomes somewhat limiting at a certain point? Like the boom bap? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, you just felt like creatively you needed to do something else? Yeah, yeah, to kind of bring excitement back. And then I was kind of helped by uh, my homie, too, thought the same. And he was making some dope shit in that type of, like, you know, and I, yeah, it all kind of made sense at the time. And then Tick Tick, to be honest, like, I want to make another song like that. That one. song is yeah, fire, like, fire. Like, fire. Like, fire. That's, like, more, like, harder. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't give a... Yeah, 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 yeah. you going at him. Um, now... Something that I feel like is dope about you also, you coming from the school of emceeing, you know, like actually rocking shows. And a lot of artists nowadays, they're rapping over their pre-recorded vocals for the whole song, not just for hooks, you know what I mean? Like, basically, they're just like jumping around on stage and lip syncing. And it's like cool, like a lot of those shows have an incredible energy, but like you always like kind of stood firm on the actually rapping during your shows like it makes sense for the style that i do you know like um i like i get why some people do it because like it's like super heavy the type of music they're making it's like i just yeah i've always pre uh, i've always liked like actual vocals like i respect the fuck out of a rapper when i see him on stage and he's like just straight on like the mic no ad libs no nothing like just straight on the mic and it's who's killing it like who was the one that did the verses um fucking um, um locks, uh, locks uh, and a uh, dip set yeah, and you could tell when fucking um, why am I drawing a blank on his fucking um, Jada Kiss? Jada Kiss. Yeah, when he grabbed the mic and he's rapping raw, like like bro, that shit stands out. It's different. Yeah, it's 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 real real different. Yeah. Um, and do you feel like at a certain point you'll because you said you're like a big R and B fan too? Do you feel like you're gonna be going in that direction ever? Uh, no, nah, honestly, I'm kind of not making that much music consistent. I'm dro I'm dropping like I'm dropping like two tracks a year, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, with a video or something like. 
right now I'm trying to put my foot, understand the, I appreciate the business of it, that business aspect of it, I understand like the behind the scenes. I don't like to show faces much no more. I've realized that. I want to get into like the managing and A&R side of things. You feel me? Like okay. I made so many connections throughout my careers. I know so many people that are in the music, in music realms that I know I couldn't collab with, but I know artists I could plug them up. Like if I was to get an artist and I know I could use certain resources that I never use, uh, certain outlets, certain relationships, you know, so that's my uh, transitioning. So it's my transition is kind of stepping away from making so much music. Mm. I still am in the like for fun and expressing myself. You going from Lil Wayne to Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> shit if all goes well <laughs> but um yeah. all tree y'all <laughs> <laughs> no you know i just I, I love the managing aspect or, or i've been picking a lot of brains of people who manage an a and r and stuff like that and i like what they do what do you look for like if you were gonna find an artist what would be like what are you looking to what type of artist are you looking to put on uh, well, there's two approaches, right? We could do whatever is working right now, which seems to be the formula. So I'm never against or opposed to doing that, working the angles, those angles. Also, something unique, you know, something different, something not so like, not obvious, something that could still be integrated with whatever is out there, but still has its own like essence. Like if I find something like that, like to me, if I find somebody with a really weird voice, but they're just talented and they know how, and maybe they need a up on if they're open to up in their style or up in their approach to image, you know, proposing something, a formula to somebody. And cause I never want to be the guy to be like, Oh, I see your vision. We got to change it though. You know, it got to be like, at least how I see it. Like I rather take criticism on amplifying what I already got from mm -hmm. somebody that's going to approach me in that manner. So I feel like, I don't know, you know, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of uh, that was kind of interesting. You you mentioned the voice thing, and it's come up a, a few times. And like, there's a lot of people that have requested the self provoked interview. Like, I've got hit up several times. Like, okay. huh. you should interview self provoked. And I like, cause especially once they saw me interview Baby Franco mm. and Reverie, and they're like, "Oh, what's up with self provoked?" And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm huh. like, "Yeah, that's the homie." Which I was already thinking I wanted to do it regardless. Duno was gonna actually sit down with me today and interview you, but he wound up having something else to do. Like, oh, he he fucks with your music. Like, like, oh, yeah. as well and um but i know like you guys all have really distinct voices like you sev like mm -hmm. you I know like Sevier, Sevier has you for sure all you guys like yeah. have really unique voices interesting that, and that's what people were saying when they were asking like yo i love his voice that would be mm -hmm. like the number one comment i heard but um it's kind of dope as far as like an artist to put on, here's like if what I'm looking for. If I was gonna be an A and R, and I've been saying this for like four or five years, and it still hasn't happened, and I feel like it would be bigger now than ever, especially because. Let me ask you this: What do you feel like? You know, every year there's like a trend in hip hop, right? What do you feel like last year like was the thing that was popping? Uh, last year. I feel like we're still kind of on. What, what, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying my thing, what I would say is women rappers. You feel me? Like, oh, word. like you word. know what I'm saying? Glorilla, Ice Spice, Lotto, like all these different chicks. And they're, you know, like city girls all talking that really like raunchy sexual shit. Like there was more like girls blowing up last year yeah. as MCs than as rappers than, yeah. than men by far. Yeah. Like that's kind of the thing right now. Girl girl voices pierce beats very like you know, For and, show. And the high pitch, like my, like my voice, I'm very, very uh, aware of this shit too. Like yeah. it pierces the beat in a very different manner than a deeper voice. Voice, well, you know? Yeah, so I feel like when I hear a girl rap, that's why it's hella, it's, it's strong. You feel me? Like for sure, yeah, it yeah. cuts through the, and that's why like even yeah. like Eminem had that like nasally voice at first that would cut through the mix. Really, like me, it was always difficult because I like have a deeper voice and it's like the same frequency as a snare, yeah. so it's difficult to mix around a snare. But if you have that high voice, you're sitting right on top of the mix. But like, so my idea and what I've been looking for, and you as an A and R, maybe you could, uh, you know, aspiring A and R, maybe you could make this happen. I want to find a L.A. West Coast version of Cardi B. And I feel like it would be the, but like Chicana, like a Mexican girl, like from a hood, tatted up Chola, ra rapping like real raunchy, like, but like banged out too. That's like dope with it, with bars. Yeah, yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Like Cardi B from L.A., Mexican, banged out with bars. Like not not like Dominican or Puerto Rican and shit, but like Mexican. You yeah, feel yeah. me? Like I feel you. Wouldn't that be crazy? Or even Salvadorian. Like that would be super hard, I feel like. No, that would. I, I see where you're going with that. I, I see it. <laughs> like, like if Snow the Product was from L.A. and more banged out. 
mm-hmm. and had like face tats. Mm-hmm. I think that would be crazy. I want to if, if if you're out there, don't even holler at me. Holler at self provoked. He gonna get you right. We'll line it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, something about you that I've always found interesting. You like have really unique perspectives on things like politics like you read a lot Mm -hmm. you think for yourself you're very outside the box like were you always kind of like that is that like it feels like you have a very rebellious perspective yes i have always well i got uh how do i say this my veil got peeled uh peeled back when a little bit to a degree when i was probably uh 15 16 Mm -hmm. um just like kind of started f- uh, figuring out like the origins of, uh, origins of my religion and stuff like that and how they came to be, how they became popular. And I was kind of like, oh shit, you know, and that shit, you know. Uh, yeah, I just got, I'm just curious with that shit, bro. I'm just like, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm obsessive. So when I start kind of finding something that makes sense, I'm like, I want to figure this out a little bit or get some insight on it as much as I can and uh, I'll go down that rabbit hole. But for sure, I just feel like the masses are completely like manipulated, obviously, you know, mm. and, and, and it's a necessity and like to a degree, right? But I just feel like there is definitely some, uh, some fuck shit for sure, and and it's not like people always want to blame politicians, government, but it's way above that. It's way above organizations. It's way it's about like fun, family bloodlines and certain like family crests that have been around and like prominent for so long, you know, and mm. and even like in certain organizations, it's just a bunch of stuff, you know. But it's interesting. Prodigy had had a line in the song, "Illuminati want my mind, soul, and my body. Mm-hmm. Secret society trying to keep the eye on me." Yeah, is that kind of like what you're talking about? Um, well, we could go so many places with with just those lines, but yeah, hundred percent. Like, and I'm not against the uh, like people hate Freemasons. I don't hate Freemasons. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure there's some corrupt ones or things like that. I'm I'm not against Freemasonry. I actually admire and respect what they do. I admire like a lot of their history. I admire uh, a lot of people that people would consider like uh how do i say controversial figures and stuff like that but i just feel like every person is like an expression of god in their own sense and their uh, cornerstones to whatever their life is about and they're applying their cornerstones to things on a societal manner if that's what their intent is and with that being said is like i can't really knock anybody with uh ideologies that i'm not in their plans for or i'm mm-hmm. not on their good side for but i appreciate everything in philosophy yeah so do you kind of <laughs> do you kind of believe that it's like a dog eat dog world. Like, and if you're not, if you if you're not the hunter, you're the hunted. So it's better to stay with the gun, metaphorically speaking. Um, it's good to be aware. So it, yeah, it's good not to let somebody's uh, manipulation is only a weapon if you're unaware of it, right? So mm. like to me, it's like I want to disarm as many people that have certain weaponry aimed towards me. You know, so like I rather understand like what they want, what their outlooks. Like there's there's philo- there's there's philosophies out there's like. Or outlooks on life, we call it accelerationists, like nerd people mm-hmm. in Silicon Valley that believe we need to integrate humanity with. And this is so open, like they talk about this shit very open, like right. You know how like Elon Musk is doing the Neuralink thing, like kind mm-hmm. of step in. But it's, and that's essentially like you basically like get an iPhone and plant it in your head and like you, not that deep yet, but but essentially, yeah, right. we're kind of gateway gate. Uh, yeah, we're going through some interesting times. We're running the whole, uh, I feel like there's a lot of uh, intentional confusion they're trying to put on young kids right now, you mm. know, with things that they need to figure out on their own when they grow up, but they're kind of pushing this agenda and this profit, putting it in little kid shows, putting it in little kid books. TikTok. TikTok. Dude, the TikTok algorithm is, compl- I'm sure you're aware of this because a lot of people, everyone knows this, but like the algorithm is completely different than right. uh, here than China. Like, right. Over there, you go to China, you ask a little kid what they want to be, they're telling you they want to be like an engineer. Some crazy shit, right? right? Over here, you ask a fucking dumbass little kid what they want to be, and they're like, oh, TikTok girl. I want to be a yeah. YouTuber. And it's like, fuck, we're fucked. You know, like, yeah. I feel like a lot of, uh, uh, yeah. And then a lot of people don't even, aren't on current affairs, like BRICS, like uh, mm-hmm. there's this currency, you know, Brazil, mm-hmm. Russia. India, uh, China, and fucking not Saudi Arabia, even though they just joined. Um, United Arab Emirates. I or? forgot, but they're creating a currency mm. like a that's gonna like the it. euro. Yeah, but it's an, a global alliance. So and mm. and, and this alliance uh, occupies fifty two percent of global population. So it's gonna throw the dollar out, but 
But what I'm saying is like important things aren't being reported on mainstream right. news and stuff like that. Like if you search up bricks on Google, I'm sure you'll find something. Well, and that's like kind of that. crazy too. Like you said, like these are countries in several different continents and different sectors, and they're very populous countries. Mm. Like you said, China, India, South like, Africa was the last. South set. Africa, so, yeah. like yeah, these are yeah, they're big, big countries. Argentina you know I mean? just uh, Argentina just joined uh, is. Uh, Already uh, announced that they want uh, plan on joining. Aren't, aren't you Argentinian? Yeah, That's your people Argentina. right there. Yeah, Congrats yeah. on the World Cup. Come oh, word. hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, Messi man. That's right. Yeah. But what that Maria all of them. And it gets messy apparently with all this stuff going on. Like yeah, but I'm enjoying the show, man. Like I said, I have no, I don't cling on to what's right or wrong. You know, I feel like that's kind of depends what side of the coin you're on. So mm -hmm. like, I'm just enjoying the show and just trying to be aware so I could like. I gotta do something with my dollars in my stacks, and I gotta do something with them, you know? Fucking, they're buying all their gold back from the states because everybody's right. saying we're not back. We don't have everything we're giving to Ukraine, we can't back up. You feel me? So, all these countries are already aware that we don't got the fucking that much money we're putting up. Well, and the gold standards is, is supposed to be what sets. Mm -hmm. currency and all that but yeah. that's why we have inflation because we're printing more money than we actually have yeah. like yeah for sure man do you do you feel like um your pursuits of this type of knowledge kind of derailed your desire for like being in the spotlight and being a rapper 100 100 yeah that's why i don't want to be a uh, and I'm saying some people have that energy and I'm telling you that's dope pursue that shit Don't ever let what I say knock anybody's like but for me. It's like I don't want to be the product mm. I don't want to have to like hey, what's up guys? I'm right here. Hey, what's up? Okay today? We have a show like I don't want to like have to be on tour doing 50 like you know while someone's getting paid at home when they're with their family and they're getting like I just don't and the tour might be fun for somebody, you know But for me, I rather stay at the pad and do some shit that is super introverted and isn't fun to other people so it's just a personal like outlook i just i'm not that guy no more <laughs> do you still go out a lot or like not really rarely rarely no oh uh, if i go out i'll go out with like a shorty or something or i'll go out with like meet up with the homies and be there for like an hour or two and then you just go to do my thing and i like to plot my week i like to plan i like to do weird shit bro <laughs> <laughs> i like i'm very big on like occult philosophies and occult stuff too I like to mm. learn, uh, do my like occult disciplines my fasting my meditations my ritual work oh shit um weird shit that people would consider demonic because they don't understand it and they like to right. judge it you know <laughs> but that's like i mean at a certain point like you said earlier you kind of did research into religion and like it kind of yeah. made you realize the way you grew up wasn't like yeah. there yeah for sure like i i was scared when I first started getting into like alternative or other uh, philosophies or dogmas, religions, whatever, um, my subconscious mind wasn't with it. Like I would get anxious or I'd get nervous reading this shit because I'm like, yo, am I fucking going to go to hell? Because I was right. I grew up in a hella like fucking I went to church on Sundays like until like middle school and shit. Mm -hmm. So I, I hella and I hella always had a connection with what we call like God or, or higher whatever you want. You know? Spirituality. Yeah. Like I always would have conversations like that. So I was always tight as a youngster. So. I feel like I felt uh, I was being rebellious towards those past uh, beliefs when I was getting into new shit. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting to see like this development because so many people, if they got to a level of success and notoriety in music as you, they would want to lean into that so much and be like, yo, I'm a I'm a rap star and look at me, I'm blowing mm -hmm. up. But you kind of got like a little dose of that and you kind of were like, yo, I don't like what I have to do to sustain this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Yeah, I didn't like, I don't want, yeah, different lifestyle, lifestyle adaptions. I wanted to kind of step out of that. Yeah. So did that kind of make you lean more into the graph again? Because it's like, okay, I could still be like artistic? No, I kind of, now the graph, I kind of took a step back for like, I, don't get me wrong, I'm still like involved with my, my homies and stuff. But uh, as far as going out and painting, I don't do that no more. I'm kind of okay. like, that was my, this, like my destructive expressions. I feel like I'm trying to construct right now. So I'm like, mm. right now I'm working on like a, uh, I'm sure, I don't know if you know you ain't hard fool. Shout out you yeah, ain't yeah, hard yeah. fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the homies right yeah, there. Yeah, shout out. Shouts to you ain't hard fool. Oh, yes. The hardest, the, man. You might not be hard, but they the hardest account on damn Instagram. Yeah. I rock Hell with yeah. them fools. It's my we're working. Girls. We're working on something actually together. We're gonna start a little something, and then uh, so I'm doing that. I'm in the cannabis world heavy as well. Um, and like I said, the management thing. I'm trying to you know plant some seeds there. Get get into that, and yeah, and, and keep doing what I enjoy, man. That's awesome. Um, it's kind of interesting. Like we were talking about people that you worked with over the years that kind of found different levels of success. Like y'all were kind of in the mix with Fora at one point too, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah. Is it kind of crazy to see like the whole path that he went on and stuff? Um, crazy? Nah, nah. I feel like he was doing what he knew would work. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, emotional shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a different lane, but you feel me? Yeah. Now, um, as far as like, okay, a lot of the things we were just discussing, it's kind of along the lines of certain shit that Kanye's been talking about recently. I feel like. Do you feel like um, do you feel like Ye's been kind of wrongly persecuted? Do you, do you support some of his ideologies, or how do you feel about that? He says a lot of truth for sure. He does, and like in a very uh, generalized manner. Like you know, it's not how do I say this? There's degrees to truth and everything, and some of the shit he's talking about has very high degrees of truth. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, to me, it's kind of hating, though, like, because this is like, yo, certain foods have a certain way and they figured out they got a certain system. You feel me? You can't hate the like it's like a business structure. It's like, ah, oh, you got to crack it. And it's hard to crack. They got it established. But it's like to me, I'd be hating. And mm -hmm. I, I obviously, like, like I said, I don't like to right or wrong too much. So that's why, like, I don't want to judge it. But there definitely is a lot of truth to what homie's saying. And he says more than just what uh, the headlines are saying. He also brought up the Vatican, Rome, you know. Those are interesting topics. And they, <clears throat> if you look into um, who created uh, CIA and FBI, people that belong to Knights of Malta, Knights of Malta is under the Vatican. So there's certain things that if you extrapolate, like, there's, you know, and I don't want to fucking go and on, on this down a rabbit hole. Nah, right but now, it's, but I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting stuff. It is definitely interesting stuff. And it is, there is a lot of truth. Like I said, he's wild and the people he's hanging out with is very polarized. And like, there is like, but even those people that are polarized, they have their truths too. And if you listen to them talk, listen to both sides talk or listen to everybody talk. That's what I do. You know, I like to, I know what the mainstream narrative is already. Everybody does. So it's like. Well, do you feel like at this point, the way I look at it is the mainstream narrative. There's no more information because there's we're living in the age of information and there's so much information, whatever, whatever um, echo chamber mm -hmm. you kind of put yourself in the midst of. That's the information you're going to get like and that's what your algorithm is going to dictate. Exactly. And if like if, if I watch CNN mm -hmm. or opposed to Fox, that's going to give me two different complete uh, news sources. Or if I'm looking on Infowars or if I'm looking at you feel me reinforces what you're already on. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's where like. Certain like, yeah, and, and, and that's the problem. Right. But to me, like to solve the problem is like, all right, where, where what documents are they talking about? Like, OK, where is this? It's from a government website, CDC. Okay, let me go to the actual CDC and look at the actual. So go to the like, source. My, yeah. You know, instead of letting foods to like because I could come and be fucking saying some bullshit, you know, or fucking the news could come be saying some bullshit. And then like just because you kick it with me more than you watch news, you're going to believe me or like do your own homework. But I feel like people are just lazy. Everybody just wants like their food getting dropped off at the door, which I'm guilty of too. <laughs> Fucking Uber Eats. Um, we just are very lazy and just want to like, like when everyone blames everything on Freemasons or Illuminati or like things like that, it's like, um, it's not that black and white. And it's not just like these names come from bigger organizations and saying that is just kind of dismissing the bigger picture. You know, if you blame Freemasons for everything, it's kind of like, all right, that's, it's like a scapegoat and everyone just directs their energy there and then there's no nothing being solved it's like what's the problem where did the problem come from who created the problem what, what culture is why what culture is, i don't know you know and to me what kanye says too one one thing too because a lot of people are on that blm bullshit um to me like you can't target racism mm. until what kanye finally said that i've been saying for years there's certain people that run the, a certain industry that aren't the people that are the face of, right? And there's a certain... The unseen hand. Yeah. And there's a fucked up message being put out consistently to, like, people, like, where it doesn't even just... It, it, obviously, that culture is contagious. It bleeds through. And it, 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 my whole to my whole thing is, like, there's a lot of malicious intent, I feel like, with the with this industry that I'm trying to get into. <laughs> so I'm right here talking your shit, but I'm right here trying to get into it. But obviously not in those levels. That's, like, big... That's, like, not a and R. That's not manager. That's not fucking that's shit you don't know about <laughs> right yeah is it kind of like is it scary because now you're at a point where you know you were you were living somewhat comfortably off of your music and you were doing well and stuff like now you're kind of moving into a new space where you're transitioning out of it and really kind of have for the past couple years right like you put out what two or three videos this uh 2022 
Maybe and one was like a collab, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. And um, and the year before that, about the same. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, do you, is is it kind of like scary? Like, like you're kind of jumping off. Uh, ju- no, I have a, already. I have a. I have a a good. Uh, how do I say this? Um, a good source of income that's okay. not from music and all okay. that. So I'm chilling. Yeah. So you're financially in a place there where you I'm, could. I'm chilling. I could fucking. F- have a vacation. I wouldn't do it because I'm gonna lose money in it. But I'm chilling right now. Right, you that. can pursue your passion and whatever the next step is. I can read as many books as I want without losing money. Yeah, that's right. Good. That's right. Yeah, introvert. Without, yeah. Now, for people that are interested in a lot of the stuff that you were just talking about, are there any specific authors or places that you recommend? Um. Well, it depends what. Like, if you want to understand, like, uh, if you want to, okay. People, are, since I'm talking about Freemasonry a lot, right? Like, if you want to understand more about Freemasonry, look into uh, Freemason artists. I mean, Freemason artists. <laughs> Freemason authors. Manly P. Hall, Albert Pike, even though he gets a bad rep, and I kind of see why. But there's a lot of people out there that, if you really want to know, it's a lot of boring digging, but it's still information. Manly P. Hall is a Freemason, if you want to understand a little bit more about that. Uh, Israel Regardi, if you want to understand more about occult stuff that a lot of people call demon uh demon shit or whatever or cabalian i don't know so there's so many books i don't know what topic right. or whatever but um if someone wants to kind of get a uh, introduction of like a philosophy i'm heavy into it's called hermeticism which is a very basic philosophy but there's a book called cabalian which is very known k-y-b-a-l-i-o-n um that's a really good book too I think you're putting a lot of people up on game. You added some creases and some craniums. You feel <laughs> me? Like yeah, it's a cool book. That's yeah. that's that that's very very dope. Now, um, the past few years, there's definitely been like a huge rise in Latino hip hop. In particular, like there's a lot of like you know Chicano artists in LA blowing up like all over the place. Like, is it kind of like you know you? Being a Latino artist in L.A. for several years, it's kind of cool to see where it's at. You got, you know, um, Money Sign Suede. You got Bravo the Br- uh, Bag, Bag Chaser. The yeah, thing, yeah. Right? He, you know, you got... There's so many different fools kind of going up right now in the city. Not for real. Yeah, and it's it's pretty recent, Even right? like OGZ before that a little bit. Like yeah, there's, yeah. But there's so many representatives. Yeah. Like, no, hell yeah. It, it, it is Swifty crazy. Blue, you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. what is that? What's that kind of like? Is it cool to see? Like, super cool, super cool to see. Yeah, and 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 I like that also. I feel like uh, not not calling them Chicano, but there's also a Chicano side that's getting right. that's getting even more love now. And right. Because like, back then Chicano, I feel like Chicano rappers people didn't want to be a Chicano rapper. Or whatever. Right. So I feel like that's getting love too. And then yeah, like you said, the the other Latino rappers doing. I've that. always thought the Chicano rap was hard too, like Mr. Shadow and Diablo mm-hmm. and all those fools, Mr. Lil One, like Conejo. Yeah, Conejo's yeah, yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not for sure. I remember when a uh, Busy Bone. I had all his solo albums. He did a. He dropped the project with High Power. Shouts to Busy fool. That's yep. my dog. Favorite rapper of all time, goat, fucking, yeah. You guys are. Do you ever talk to Busy anymore? I ran in. Well, I saw him at a show. I'm pretty sure you don't remember me. Yeah, yeah. Like, but I ran into him at a show. I didn't want to be weird, so I just didn't say what's up. But you didn't even say what's up. No, because I'm like, you You are weird for not saying what's up. (laughs) Well, because he was like doing his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Hey, bro, we did a song a long time ago when I was 17. Like that. You'd be surprised. You might have remembered, bro. He's a cool ass dude. But. You know what's crazy? He had a uh, he had a yellow notebook. Wait, do I have it on my wallet? No, no, I don't think I have it on my wallet anymore. But um, he had a lyric that I feel like he was gonna throw away because it was on the floor or whatever. And I was like, man. And it was like scribbled. He had like some bars on it, and a lot of them were scribbled. So I'm like, I'm gonna take this lyric. That's <laughs> I fire. I doubt I have it. Yeah, I, don't, I took it out. It was a big yellow paper, but I kept it in my wallet for a long time. I found it again recently, like in the stash somewhere, and I put it in my wallet. But I think I. Really that true. that needs to be in the museum right there. You <laughs> feel me? Yeah. So I know you talked about upcoming endeavors. What's what's next for self provoke? Shit, bro. Fucking um <laughs> it's such a such a weird question. Because there's a lot. But um definitely gonna be dropping some tracks every here and there. I'm actually working on something uh right now with uh the homie Nick Rodriguez. Shout oh, shout out to my boy Nick. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Dope filmmaker, dope director. Hell yeah. Um, got my boy Agent Spitz directing it. You know, Ooh. I'm gonna let the homie direct get it into his creativity. Is it gonna be shit. porn? You doing porn? Nah. <laughs> Agent nah. Spitz, be come on. <laughs> um, that fool got his dick sucked by Ava Divine. Come on. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Don't no. play with him. Oh, he has. He was crazy fucking pouring history. bitches before Adam. Like he ha- what? He has crazy history. Way before. There's a crazy vault. You ever yeah. go to his house? Oh, he'll show you. He Probably. shows everybody. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could you could definitely like you can make OnlyFans damn near the <laughs> the vintage vault. I like that era of porn too. Yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, bro. So just. <laughs> Just drop some music every here and there. Get to know that business I'm trying to endeavor upon, the managing a and pick some more brains about that, um, and do what I'm doing right now with the cannabis stuff, you know? Okay, yeah, look yeah. at you. Yeah, so. Look at you. Amazing, amazing. Oh, yeah. Any final words? My dog, Selfie. Uh, shit. Mm, nah, I think I spoke enough. <laughs> okay. You know the vibes. Self-provoked, lush, uno, no jumper. Log in with us. Come on.